much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where you are rewarded for knowing obscure answers. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> Couple number one. Hi, I'm Andy and I'm from Hebden Bridge and this is my cousin Sam and he's from Newcastle. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Sarah. This is James. We're an engaged couple and we're from Exeter. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Lindsay. This is my friend Lizzie and we're students at the University of Manchester. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm John. This is Mike. We're both students who live together in Southampton. And these, ladies and gentlemen, are today's contestants. <laughs> Thanks to all of you. We'll find out more about you throughout the show as it goes along. So that just leaves one more person for me to introduce with an intellect so fierce off camera he has to wear a muzzle. <laughs> it's my pointless friend. It's Richard. Hi, yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. And to you. I'm very, very pleased with myself. Tell I'm me why. I literally just finished a sweet. Yeah, I saw you had a sweet in the title. <laughs> yeah. You, it was, it was oh, sticking out yeah. like that. You know what? I didn't think it was going to happen. Yeah. I thought you were going to turn to me and I'd be mid-sweet. Yeah, but your molars are all cased in bits of boiled sweet now, Fine by me. Do you, do you believe in dentists? I think I do, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I saw one once. <laughs> I know. They make you go off too often, though, don't they? Yeah. yeah. I figured about ten years ago, I figured if I don't go for a while, by the time I go again, uh, dentistry would have moved on. Left it for ten years, next time I went, it was all lasers. Painless. Where's your dentist? Where's my dentist? Where... The moon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you La lasers in your dentist? Well, I don't laser dentist, man. No, I got a normal one with a drill and a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got a lovely question one today. Question one is uh, it's quite a topically type one that some people will struggle with, but some people are gonna do amazingly on. Lots of pointless answers. Oh, very exciting. Uh, thanks very much. Well, all our questions on pointers have been put to 100 people before the show. Our contestants here need to find the obscure answers those 100 people didn't get. Now, what everyone's trying to do, of course, is to find a pointless answer. This is an answer that none of our 100 people gave, and each time that happens, we will add 250 quid to the jackpot. Now, Myra and Rory didn't win the jackpot last time, so we add another £1,000 to that, so today's jackpot starts off at a respectable £2,000. <laughs> Right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. OK, in this round, I'm going to take an answer from each of you, but there is to be no conferring, and whichever pair has the highest score at the end of the round will, of course, be sent home. All right, our first category today is... pop music. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many artists who released the biggest selling singles of 2012 as they could. Biggest selling singles of 2012, Richard. We're looking for the name of any artist or group who feature on the official charts top 40 best selling singles of 2012, please. So anyone in that top 40 best selling singles of 2012, uh, where it's a featured artist as well, would accept that as a separate answer. So anyone who's released it or a named featured artist on one of those songs. Very, very best of luck. OK, thanks very much indeed. Now then, Sam and Andy, you all drew lots before the show, and today you are going to go first. Andy. What do you do, Andy? I'm an editor for a publishing company, and I um, sub-edit uh, law reports, and I also project manage them. For that the must be such fun. Those law You must want to take them home and just read them, oh, read them at night. If you can't <laughs> sleep, it's the best stuff. Yeah. yeah I believe <laughs> I think so. uh, what do you like getting up to when you're not editing law reports? I'm a, a member of a local Amdram society, so I, you know, it's the, uh, the smell of the crowd and the roar of the grease paint and all <laughs> that sort of stuff. Um, and also I write songs and sing to my cats in my home studio. My wife doesn't, isn't really that uh, interested. But the cats just love it. They love it. Fantastic. Now then, Andy, uh, what about this, this, this issue of uh, top-selling singles of 2012? Kind of struggling a little bit, but I guess because we're looking for stuff that's... Pointless answer. I'm going to go for Coldplay. Coldplay, says Andy. Let's see if Coldplay's right. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said it. It's right. That's the main thing. Still going down into the 30s and 20s, into the teens, into single figures. Well done, Andy. Look at that. Eight. Well Good work. Coldplay. Number 25 on the list with Princess of China. Sarah. Welcome to Pointless. Where are you from, Sarah? Exeter. From Exeter. And, and you and James are engaged? Yes, getting married next month. 
Oh, very well done. Congratulations. How long have you been engaged for? Um, just under two years now. So, Good yeah, stuff. Long time in the making. <laughs> How did you meet? Um, James lived in the flat upstairs from me. Very good. Now then, Sarah, how good are you on the top-selling singles of 2012? Well, when I saw this round come, come up, I thought I'd be OK, but then my mind went completely blank. So, um, I'm going to say Jesse J. I think that might be OK. OK. Jesse J. Well, let's see if Jesse J is right, and if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Jesse J. It's right. Very well done. 13. 13 for Jesse J. Yeah, Jesse J was number eight on the list with Domino, which sold three quarters of a million copies. Wow. Sang it at the, uh, the Queen's Jubilee as well. Indeed. Now then, Lizzie, welcome to the show. Uh, you are studying at Manchester University. Mm -hmm. What do you study? Spanish, Portuguese and Latin American studies. Yeah, and that's just got travel to the best places written all over it, hasn't I it? I hope so. Yeah, very good. And you've done your year out, have you? Yeah, in 2012. And so you I'm were... panicking a bit. <laughs> I spent the year in Spain, so I oh. can't think of any popular artists now. OK, <laughs> right. Um, I'm going to say Got Ye. Got ye. Got ye. Got ye. OK, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said got ye. Absolutely right. Very well done, Lizzie. Eight is our lowest score so far. Seven is our new low score. Very well done indeed. Good start. It's Gautier, somebody, somebody that I used to know is the name of the song, and that was the biggest selling song of 2012. 1.3 million copies. That's awful. I You'd, you would recognise it if you heard it. Yeah, I was probably. hoping people wouldn't remember the name. Yeah. <laughs> How do you say it? Uh, Goitier. Goitier. Yeah. You would Go honestly recognise it's a very, okay. very... It was everywhere in 2012. As very much was I. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> very good answer. Very good. OK, now then, Mike. You are a returning pair, our only returning pair, you and Jonathan. Remind us what happened last time. Uh, we had a, a question about forests and... Uh, I backed John's get a good answer, however, it turned out the shoe was on the other foot. I'm not, I'm not yeah. annoyed with him, we're still <laughs> very much on talking terms. Uh, very good. OK, now then, Mike, how good do you think you're going to be at the uh, best-selling singles of 2012? Um, I'm not, I, I've lost confidence in myself. I think I've got second show jitters and I've, um, I've had a few oh, names going through my head. <laughs> <laughs> I can, and um, and I've, I'm lost for names, so I'm going to have to take a punt. But uh, I'm going to say Maroon 5. I think that sounds good. Let's see. Maroon 5. Is it right? How many people said it? If it is... It's right. Very well done, Mike. Well, seven, our best score so far. Oh, look at that. You smashed through that, Mike. Very well done. Lovely new low score. Three. Also in the top ten on that list, Maroon 5 at number nine with Payphone. OK, well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores as they stand. Our newest score is also our lowest. Mike, very well done there. Lovely low score of three. I'd say you and Jonathan looking pretty strong on the back of that. Then we go up to seven, where we find Lizzie and Lindsay. Up to eight, where we find Andy and Sam. And then 13, where Sarah and James are to be found. So, James, I think you're going to be quite good at this. I'll give it my best. I th it's all you can do. <laughs> and we have to hope that's enough to keep you in. Uh, best of luck. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? OK, now then, Jonathan, we understand you're a final-year student at Southampton. What do you do in your spare time? Uh, I spend most of my time outside of work, which I obviously do a lot of studying. I before, bet, I'm a sure. lot. Yeah, a uh, lot. rowing and ballroom dancing. Uh, how long have you done ballroom dancing, Jonathan? I started about a year and a half ago. Do you own your own set of tails now? Not tails, no. no. Only, only the experienced uh, ballroom dancers get to wear tails. OK, OK, very good. Now then, Jonathan. So, remember, we're looking for the artists who released any of the biggest-selling singles of 2012. I'm going to go with Flow Rider. Flow Rider, says Jonathan. Flow Rider. I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the high scorers on 13 are James and Sarah, and you are on three. If you can score nine or less, you'll avoid becoming the new high scorers. Uh, let's see if Flow Rider is right. If it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said it. It is right. Oh, you've done it! Look at that! Four! Very, very well done! 
takes your total up to seven, where you equal Lindsay and Lizzie's low score. Very well done indeed. Yeah, you love Float Rider, don't you? I do, I, I do actually. You really do. Quite a, yes. He's actually on that list three times, Flow Rider, at number 10 with Wild Ones, yeah, so they're at 15 with Whistle, and he's also featured on somebody else's song. A good year for Flow Rider. Definitely a good year. Uh, now then, Lindsay. Lindsay, welcome to the show. You are also studying at Manchester University. What are you studying? I study Spanish and Portuguese. Good, good. OK, now, what about... Were you also abroad during 2012? I was, yeah. I was in Barcelona, so they still play quite a lot of English music, and then in a really small village in Portugal where they don't <laughs> play much English music. So... Right, OK, yeah. well, good luck. Uh, the high scorers are still James and Sarah on 13, which means if you can score five or less, you'll avoid becoming the new high scorers. I think I'm going to play it safe since it's the first round, and I'm going to say Kanye West. And Kanye just hope it's low. West. Uh, here is your red line. It's quite low. Let's see if Kanye West can get you anywhere near that. Kanye West, how many people said it? Is it right? It's right. Oh, very well done. Look at that. Two for Kanye West. <laughs> the best score so far. Wow. Terrific scoring so far, and another very good answer. Well played. Uh, he's at number 31 on the list. Another collaboration with, uh, with another artist who I won't name. Good. As it should be. Now, James, you're the high scorers, James. No pressure. No pressure. Um, so, whose idea was it to come on Pointless? Um, I think it was mine. Um, <laughs> we watch it at home, and we're a little bit competitive. So. Oh, really? Oh, so, you play against each other? Yeah. yeah. So, a bit, a bit of a new experience being on the same team, then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which do you prefer? Think carefully before you answer, James. Definitely being on the same team. Well done is the right answer, yes. <laughs> OK, now then, James, yes. singles of 2012. I'm going to just have a guess. Um, we did see him in concert recently, and I hope he had a, a, a big hit last year. Labyrinth. Labyrinth, says James. Let's see if that's right. There's no red line for you. You're the high scorers, but let's see how many people said Labyrinth. Absolutely. Oh, it's a great answer, too. The joint lower score of the whole round. James, well done. Takes your total up to 15. His big hit in 2012 was Beneath Your Beautiful, of course, which is uh, number 12 on that list. Probably sold more since as well. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Sam. Hi. Sam, what do you do? I'm a laboratory manager in a food testing company. Wow. That's a, that's a good job for the peckish, I should think. <laughs> uh, mm. That's good. You could do, I suppose. <laughs> uh, but, no, who, who tests the food? Uh, the technicians in the laboratory. Yeah. They're, they're special <laughs> technicians. Yes. <laughs> armed with special knives and forks. And they yeah. No, it's not taste testing, it's microbiology. Always rubbing food into their, into their faces. <laughs> Check no. that they don't get hives. We, we mix it with jelly and put it in ovens. Oh, that's mm. delicious. <laughs> I, I love jelly in ovens. Oh, yeah, hot jelly. Mm. <laughs> OK, and when you're not doing that, Sam, do you keep up to speed with uh, what's going on in the charts? <laughs> I stopped listening in 2011, I think. Oh, probably... James. <laughs> this, this, could be, this could be good news for James. Um, well, now, Sam, you've had a little bit of time to think. What's your best shot? Uh, I'm just going to have to go with a band that I've heard of um, and hope they had a big selling single. Uh, I'm going to say the script. Now, this is very exciting. You want to be scoring six or less with your answer. The high scores at the moment are James and Sarah on 15. There's your red line. Let's see, the script. Is that going to get Sam and Andy below that red line? It is right, Sam. It's still going down. You've done it! Look at that, four! Very well done indeed. Takes your total up to 12. Very well played, Sam. Well played, everybody, in that round. You have to feel for James and Sarah, because there's terrific scores across the board. Um, yeah, the Hall of Fame, which also featured Will I Am, who would have scored you seven points. That would have seen this into a tie-break. But Hall of Fame, you don't know Hall of Fame? I don't know. OK, good. <laughs> Let's take a, look at some of the, uh, let's take a look at some of the pointless answers. Let's see if you've got any of these at home. Alex Clare, who had a huge hit with Too Close, Chris Brown was also in that top 40. Now, DJ Fresh, uh, who did Hot Right Now, which, uh, again, a song you re recognise, maybe not the name. 
Tiny Temper, Wiley, there you go, and Wiz Khalifa, who sung on the Maroon 5 song. Uh, to give you some of the low-scoring answers, in case uh, you've got these at home, Swedish House Mafia would have scored you one. Fun would have scored you one as well. Carly Rae Jepsen, that song was ever a Call Me Maybe, she would have scored you two points, would have been a terrific answer. David Guetta would have scored you three. Taylor Swift would have scored you three. Uh, we'll take a look at the biggest scorers, the ones that most of our 100 people said when we quizzed them online. Robbie Williams, 15. Rihanna, uh, 27, she was on Princess of China with Coldplay. And right at the top, of course, by a mile, Adele. She's become the Manchester United of, uh, of all music rounds. She really she? has, hasn't yeah. she? And deservedly so. And deservedly so. Absolutely. Uh, thanks very much, Richard. So at the end of our first round, I'm afraid the pair will be heading home with their very high score of 15. Uh, it's James and Sarah. It's been great having you on the show, albeit briefly, but we'll see you again next time. We look forward to that very much indeed. James and Sarah, lovely contestants. Thank you. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. So we're down to three pairs, and after this round, another pair will be leaving us for the head-to-head. -head. Uh, Mike and Jonathan, lovely low scoring from you in that round. Yes, you were the lower scorers, but then you're the youngest. And you're a returning pair as well. So on all those counts, it stands to reason. Anyway, best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two is cities. Cities. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? I don't mind. I'll go first. Okay. And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns cities that begin with D. Cities beginning with D, Richard. On each pass, we're going to show you six clues uh, to cities of the world that begin with the letter D. You just have to give us a nice obscure answer, give us an incorrect answer. As always, you're going to score 100 points. So we 12 cities with D to guess at home. Good luck. OK, so we're looking for these cities beginning with D, and here's our first board. We have got the capital city of Qatar, formerly known as Andong, name of a US soap opera that started in 1978, the largest city in the state of Michigan, originally a Slavic settlement called Dresden, and a city sited on the estuary of the River Liffey. I will read those all one last time. The capital city of Qatar, formerly known as Andong, Name of a US soap opera that started in 1978, the largest city in the state of Michigan, originally a Slavic settlement called Dresden, and the city sited on the estuary of the River Liffey. There we are, six clues to cities beginning with D. So, Sam, how are we feeling about cities beginning with D? Um, I could name a few, but I'm not sure about any on that board. <laughs> um, I think I will go for the largest city in the state of Michigan and say Detroit. Detroit, says Sam. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Detroit. That's right. <laughs> 22. Very well done. Yeah, based on consumption, Detroit is the, uh, the potato crisp capital of the world. Yeah, Is it really? That's my kind of town. Wow, so not the motor city so much as the, the as noisy the crisp city. city. Yeah. Very good. Uh, Lindsay. Lindsay, Detroit has gone. How are you feeling about what remains? This is not my best round. Geography is not my strong subject if it's not within South America, really. Um, so I'm going to have to pick something that I think is going to be quite high scoring and hope Lizzie gets a better answer. <laughs> um, so I'm going to say the name of a US soap opera that started in 1978 as Dallas. Dallas. Let's see if Dallas is right. Let's see how many people said it. Oh, that is high. 64 for Dallas. Yeah, it's a high score, but it's an awful lot better than 100 uh, on the first pass. Very good. Now then, Jonathan, you're the last person to have this board. Um, are you feeling confident enough to take us through it? Not at all. I don't really know any of them, to be honest. I knew, I knew both of those, but they've now gone. Uh, city sites on the estuary of the River Liffey, if it even is pronounced like that. Uh, Dunkirk? Maybe? I have no idea, so I'm just going to go for that. Dunkirk is what you've gone for. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Dunkirk. No. Oh. Bad luck, John. You're going to kick yourself when you hear what it is. Yeah. Uh, great news for Lindsay, though. Uh, that scores you 100 points, I'm afraid. That's an incorrect answer. Sorry, Jonathan. 
Sorry, Jonathan, some genuine howls of despair from the audience. Yeah, uh, I know, it's so, listening. Yeah, there is, there is now a city which you'll never be able to visit. <laughs> and it's a shame, because it's an absolutely beautiful city. It's yeah. Dublin. Dublin. <laughs> would have scored 50 points as well. Now, uh, the capital city of Qatar, people who know their capitals will know it's Doha, would have scored you 13. Now, there are clues to these last two. There's certainly a clue to the star Vic settlement called Dresden. Well, if it's not Dresden, I'm a Dutch it, uncle. It is Dresden. <laughs> it is Dresden. Dresden became Dresden 12 points. Now, this other one, the city formerly known as Andong, it's in northeastern China on the border of North Korea. A very, very difficult one to get. But if I tell you that if you know the category and you know that fact, you can tell me what the answer is. So cities beginning with D and it used to be called Andong. What is it now called? It's now called Dandong. All oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Dandong. And it's a pointless answer, so very well done if you said it at home. But that's... Uh, Dan Dong. Yeah, I tell you, I don't like being called An Dong. Let's rename this place. Yeah. I know, Dan Dong. Done. Thank you very much Pleasure. indeed, Richard. Uh, OK, well, let's take a look at the scores as we're halfway through the round. 22, as it turns out, Sam and Andy, the best score of the pass. 64, also, as it turns out, not a poor score after all. Um, and I'm afraid 100, yes, you are quite far ahead, I'm afraid, Jonathan and Mike. But you never know. Who knows what the next board's going to have on it? Uh, best of luck, Mike. OK, we're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, let's put six more clues on the board, and here they come. We have got the state capital of Colorado. The Barada River flows through this city, located in East Scotland. The capital city of Bangladesh. It's home to the Burj Khalifa. And the city in the South African province, KwaZulu-Natal. I'll read those all one last time. The state capital of Colorado. The Barada River flows through this city, located in East Scotland, the capital city of Bangladesh. It's home to the Burj Khalifa and a city in the South African province of KwaZulu-Natal. There we are. Six clues to six cities, all of them beginning with D. Now then, Mike. How do you feel about that board? Um, I feel that John would have probably been quite good at this board because I, I know his knowledge mm -hmm. quite and I reckon he would have done all right at this. So I'm a bit... Yeah. A bit disappointed with the uh, selection of uh, individuals to go for the question. But um, I reckon I'm going to go for his home of the Burj Khalifa as Dubai. Dubai, yeah. says Mike. Dubai. No red line for you. You're the high scorers on 100. Let's hope Dubai goes a long way down the column. Is it right? And if it is, how many people said it? Dubai. It is right. Oh, he's doing a brilliant job for you. Look at that, Mike, six. <laughs> That's exactly what you needed. 106, your total. Very well done. The lowest score by a margin of the round so far. Terrific answer, Mike. You've given yourself a chance now. Uh, it's 828 metres high, the Burj Khalifa. It's really big. That is big. It's almost as big as you. <laughs> uh, anyway, there we are. Now, Lizzie. Yes. Lizzie, it's your turn. The high scorers, Mike and Jonathan, on 106. You're on 64. You have to score 41 or less to go through to the head-to-head. -head. Yeah. So, remember, we are looking for the names of these capital cities, beginning with D. Is there anything there that yeah, relates to any of your areas <laughs> of expertise? I hope not, because it would be really embarrassing if there is, <laughs> if the Barada River runs through somewhere I well, know. Well, that sounds like the sort of place that ought to run through somewhere you know, know. surely. But I don't know. <laughs> I've no idea. So. I'm going to go with the city in the South African province of... Durban. Durban, says Lizzie. OK, here is your red line. Below that red line, you're through to the head-to-head. -head. It's absolutely right. Very well done, Lizzie. And you are through to the head-to-head. -head. Well done. 23. Did exactly what you needed to do. 87, your total. Well played, Lizzie. Yeah, impeccable knowledge. Sees your safety through. Very good indeed. Now, Andy. Andy, how are you feeling about this board? Um, I'd say geography isn't really one of my strengths. So. Do you fancy having a crack at any of those, talking through the board, maybe, see if you can fill any in? Um, the top one, state capital of Colorado, Denver. The Barada River flows through this city. I haven't got the foggiest on that one. Located in East Scotland might be Dundee. The capital city of Bangladesh is within my grasp, but I just can't think of the name. I'm lying, I haven't got a clue. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'm going to go for the state capital of Colorado and say Denver. 
Denver. Denver, Colorado. You're saying the high scorers remain. Mike and Jonathan on 106. You're on 22. 83 or less sees you through. How many people said Denver, Colorado? Is it right? It is right. You are in the head to head. 33. 33 takes your total up to 55. Denver, they call it the mile high city because it's a mile above sea level, Denver. Let's go through the rest. You're right about um, East Scotland, it is Dundee. Would have scored you 69 points. Uh, the capital city of Bangladesh, which has a name with another capital city, the capital of Senegal and the capital of Bangladesh, spelt differently, but both Dakar. Would have scored 11 points. Now, the Barada River, this is a pointless answer. Very well done to anyone who said it's the capital of Syria. That's Damascus. Damascus, a pointless answer, so it would have been a terrific score. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. So, Mike and Jonathan. Oh, dear, I'm so sorry. It's round two every time it's for both, you. Yeah. But uh, you played incredibly well. I think um, the, uh, the, the Dubai answer was, was a fantastic one. Lovely low score there. I'm afraid it wasn't enough to keep you in the game, though. Um, but you played so well. It's been great having you on the show. Thank you so much for playing. Jonathan and Mike, thanks. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for our head-to-head. -head. Congratulations, Andy and Sam, Lizzie and Lindsay. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £2,000. <laughs> now, obviously, we have to decide which pair is going to go through to the final to play for that money, and to do that, you are now going to go head-to-head. -head. This time, you are allowed to confer, and the first pair to win two questions will be playing for the jackpot. Well, Andy and Sam, you're the lower scorers so far, but then Lizzie and Lindsay, they've been very clever. And, of course, you now pool your resources. Best of luck to both pairs. Let's play the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> Here comes your first question, and it concerns... Cameron Diaz films. Cameron Diaz films, Richard. We're going to show you five stills now from famous Cameron Diaz films. Can you name the most obscure? Good luck. OK, let's reveal our five stills, and here they come. We have got... A. B. C. D. And E. There we are. Five stills from Cameron Diaz films. Sam and Andy, as I said before, you have played best throughout the show so far, so you get to go first. Uh, we'll say A is the mask. A, the mask. A, the mask. Now then, Lizzie and Lindsay. Talk us through the board. You can do all your talking out loud. OK. Um, B is bad teacher. D is there's something about Mary. I think E is my best friend's wedding. Or was something like that. Is that my best friend's wedding? I think so, yeah, but I think... Should we go for B, because we're more... Yeah. We're both more confident on, on B, B. I think so... D's well-known, that yeah. still. So, yeah, B, bad teacher. B, bad teacher. So we have The Mask and we have Bad Teacher. Sam and Andy went for The Mask. Shame there isn't some kind of visual clue in that photo. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> well, anyway, there we are. You're, you think it's The Mask, so uh, let's, uh, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said The Mask. It's right. Seven. Wow, seven for the mask. Were you expecting it to go that low? No. <laughs> yeah, that, that's good. OK, now, uh, Lizzie and Lindsay have said bad teacher for B. Bad teacher. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. It's right. Now, is this going to give the mask a run for its money? I want... Ooh, 28. <laughs> well, there we are, Andy and Sam. You've won that point. After one question, it's 1-0 to you. Yes, big score for Bad Teacher, a very recent uh, big hit. You were right about it. It is my best friend's wedding. I would have scored you six points. <gasps> 
Um, should have had the courage of your convictions there. Um, D, you're right, is there something about Mary, but it's a big scorer. 38 points. The best scorer on the board is C. One point if you knew that was the box. OK, thanks very much indeed. Here comes your second question. Lizzie and Lindsay, you get to go first this time, but you have to win this one to stay in the game. Best of luck. It concerns the English Civil War. There you go, just what you wanted. The English Perfect. Civil War. Richard. From Cameron Diaz to the English Civil War. That's pointless. That's how we roll. We're going to show you five clues now to facts about the English Civil War. We need you to give us the most obscure answer, please. OK, here we go with our five clues, and they are... The nickname derived from a word for horseman given to Royalist supporters, the man who became Lord Protector in 1653, the name of the professional parliamentarian army that was formed, the name of the first pitched battle of the Civil War, and the monarch who was executed as a result of the Civil War. I'll read all of those clues again. The nickname derived from a word for horseman given to Royalist supporters, the man who became Lord Protector in 1653, the name of the professional parliamentarian army that was formed, the name of the first pitched battle, and the monarch who was executed as a result of the Civil War. There we are. Five clues to facts about the English Civil War. Lizzie and Lindsay, off you go. This is not the best <laughs> round for us. We, we know one, but we think it'll be really high. So we're going to take like a kind of educated yeah. guess. I have an American friend that calls me a red coat for being British. So I'm going to say the nickname derived from word for horsemen would be red coat. Maybe they wore red coats. OK. The red coats. Red coats. Andy and Sam. Well, we think that the horsemen may be the cavaliers. <laughs> Uh, it was Cromwell, Oliver Cromwell, who was appointed Lord Protector. Uh, we think that it was the new model army, um, and the monarch was Charles I. I, I think we'll just uh, we'll go for the Lord Protector, Oliver Cromwell. Lord Protector, Oliver Cromwell. OK, there we are, Oliver Cromwell. We have Redcoats versus Oliver <laughs> Cromwell. Are you thinking of Butlins, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> no, he calls me Redcoat because I'm British. Do you ever wear a red coat when he's no. saying that? <laughs> Are you very helpful when on holiday? <laughs> Lizzie and Lindsay have gone for red coat. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said red coat. Bad luck, an incorrect answer. So, Andy and Sam, you only have to be correct with your answer and you are through to the final. Let's see, Oliver Cromwell, was he Lord Protector in 1653? Let's find out. Very well done. 32. <laughs> 32, very well done. Andy and Sam, after only two questions, you're through to the final. 2-0. Brilliant. You took us very nicely through most of the rest of the board as well, Andy and Sam. The, uh, the nickname is The Cavaliers. We'll have scored you 16 points. The professional parliamentarian army was New Model Army. It's a, a band named after them as well, many years later. One point that would have scored you. The monarch who was executed was Charles I. He would have scored you 19 points. Uh, now, the name of the first pitch battle is a pointless answer. Any idea? Very well done if you said the Battle of Edge Hill. Edge Hill. Pointless answer. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So, our losing pair at the end of the head-to-head -head round, I'm afraid to say it's Lizzie and Lindsay, but uh, take heart, you've done very well. You've come right through the head-to-head -head on your first appearance on Pointless. The great news for us is we get to see you again next time, so that'll be fun, and we'll look forward to that very much. But uh, thanks so much for playing. Lizzie and Lindsay. <laughs> but for Sam and Andy, it's now time for our Pointless final. Congratulations, Andy and Sam. You've seen off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy, so very well done. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot, and at the end of today, the jackpot stands at £2,000. There you are. <laughs> you made that look very easy. Your first appearance on the show. Yes. Lovely low scores, pretty much the whole way through. I think if you told us what the categories were going to be beforehand, we wouldn't have thought we'd be 
Really? Especially not geography. I can get lost trying to find my own oh, bathroom. Yes. <laughs> well, here we are in the final. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. But before that, you need to choose a category and you have five options to choose from, and they are... Superhero movies, tennis aces, famous verses, Manchester bands and international awards. Uh, I think we'll a... go for superhero movies. That's please. a good board, isn't it? Very good. You've got to be pleased Absolutely, with that. Yeah. Yeah. Superhero movies. Anything you particularly like to see come up in, under that category? No, I think uh, mm, it's going to be people who are in a superhero movie. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be happy with that? I think so, yes. I've seen most, of, most of them. OK, good stuff. <laughs> well, OK, but let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many actors in the Dark Knight trilogy as they could. Richard. We're looking for the name of any male actor who receives an on-screen acting credit in any of the Dark Knight trilogy. That's Batman Begins, The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises, all directed by Christopher Nolan. Any actor who's on IMDb as appearing on any of those films. Very, very best of luck. OK. You now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that £2,000 is for just one of them to be pointless. Are you ready? Yes. yes. OK, let's put 60 seconds on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Right, Christian seen... Bale. Yeah, OK. He's the big man. Uh, Christian Bale, there's... Um, uh, Burn Gorman. OK. He was in Torchwood. Take the word for that one. Yes. OK. Um, there's um, Liam Neeson. Yeah. He was the villain. Um, Anne Hathaway is a Catwoman. Male. But she's probably yeah. going to be quite a high male. scorer. It's male, isn't it? Oh, male. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, um, that Burt one sounds good. Can you think of any other more obscure ones? I'm sorry, I'm not used to what's going No, on it's one. OK. Um, um, I can think of um, oh, the guy who played the Scarecrow, oh. whose name's escaping me at the moment. Like, um, um, uh, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy was Bane in the third one. Fantastic. You're, you're um, doing well, you're doing well. Ten seconds left. Um, um, so we've got Tom. Oh, the, definitely choose the Tom one. Tom Hardy and uh, Ben Gorman. Ben Gorman. The best man. OK, your time is now up. So we were looking for any actors in the Dark Knight trilogy. I now need your three answers. Ben Gorman. Ben Gorman. Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. Um, Liam Neeson. And Liam Neeson. Now, of those three, which thinks your best shot at a pointless answer? Burn Gorman. Burn Gorman, but Burn Gorman last. Your least likely, I'm guessing Liam, Liam Neeson. Neeson. Yeah. OK, let's put those up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got Liam Neeson, Tom Hardy, and Burn Gorman. OK, so we were looking for actors in the Dark Knight trilogy. Your first answer, Liam Neeson, you thought was your least confident shot at a pointless answer. Remember, only one of those answers has to be right for you to win that jackpot of £2,000. So let's find out. For £2,000, is Liam Neeson pointless? Well, he's right. We didn't really doubt that, but how far down is he going to go? He's going down through the 30s, through the 20s. If he takes you all the way down to zero, of course, you will leave here. Eight. Eight. Not bad. Big name. That is a big name, to yeah. be scoring only eight. Looking very good for that, that other guy whose name I've already... For Burn Gorman. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> OK, unfortunately, not a pointless answer. Not a pointless answer, but a pretty reassuringly low score for the big man. OK. You only have two more chances to win that jackpot. £2,000. Uh, what would you do with that, Andy? Well, I'm... Uh, we're due to have a baby, and I'd probably put it towards renovating the house a little bit. Very good. You know, things like that. Good stuff. Well, best of luck with that. Congratulations. Thanks very much. I think I'll need it. Sam, how about you? I think I would put it towards a uh, life size Dalek. <laughs> <laughs> good for you, Sam. <laughs> that. <laughs> what, one that you could get in, do you think? Well, well maybe not me, but somebody could get it. <laughs> OK. Well, very, very best of luck with Thanks. both of those endeavours. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for actors in the Dark Knight trilogy. Let's hope nobody said your next answer, Tom Hardy. I'm feeling quite good about Tom Hardy, actually. Me too. Remember, it has to be correct, then it has to be pointless. If it's both of those things, you leave here with £2,000. Let's find out. Tom Hardy, how many people said it? Tom Hardy is absolutely right. Now, Liam Neeson took us down to eight. Tom Hardy, where is he going to stop? Down it goes, through the teens, into single figures. This could go down... Oh, six! Oh. 
No, that's good. That's good. He, he's, he's no Bern Gorman, but he's good, Tom Hardy. <laughs> OK, you only have one more chance to win today's jackpot. Everything is now riding on Bern Gorman. How did you remember about Bern Gorman? Torchwood? Uh, he's in Torchwood, yes. And I, I just remember seeing him in The Dark Knight, thinking, that's strange to see someone from British television in a big Hollywood film. Now, how many of the people we polled, do you think? How many of our 100 people think along I'm the same sort of lines none. as you? <laughs> I'm really hoping none. Well, very, very best of luck. We're looking for actors in the Dark Knight trilogy. Your third and final answer was Bern Gorman. For obvious reasons, this was your most confident shot, but the pointless <laughs> answer. So let's find out. Bern Gorman, is it right? Is it pointless? It's correct. Well, Liam Neeson took us down to eight. Tom Hardy took us down to six. Bern Gorman, your last answer. Down it goes. Still going down, down, down. Yes, you've done it! Very well done, indeed. Oh, that's very fantastic. Good. Very, very well done. That's superb. Good work. <laughs> Oh, congratulations, guys. Oh, and I, I tell you what really moves me about you winning that is you're going to get that Dalek, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the baby will be provided for. Uh, so there we are. Uh, congratulations. Bern Gorman was a pointless answer, which means you leave here with £2,000. Very well done, guys. Fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, Bern, Bern Gorman plays Striver in The Dark Knight Rises, so you knew him from Torchwood and you're going to spend the money on a walk-in Dalek. <laughs> there is a certain community in which you are going to be a hero <laughs> after this show, and you know what community that is. I think so, yes. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other pointless answers. Uh, Anthony Michael Hall was a pointless answer. There's Bern Gorman. Um, Julia Roberts' brother, mm -hmm. Eric Roberts, would have been a pointless answer. Mark Rhino Smith, who was Rhino from Gladiators, but uh, is a member of the League of Shadows. Michael Jai White, uh, Nestor Carbonelli, who plays the mayor in Dark Knight and uh, Dark Knight Rises. Tom Conti, William Devane, who plays the president, and William Fitchner, who's the, uh, the boss of the bank that the Joker robs. Lots of other pointless answers, apart from the obvious ones you've heard, virtually everybody was pointless in that. Uh, Bern Gorman, pointless in this game, not pointless, by and large, is in Bleak House, Wuthering Heights, all sorts of things, wonderful actor, and it just won you £2,000. There we are. Well, well, thanks once again to our winning players, Sam and Andy, who go away with today's jackpot of £2,000. Very well done. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.